Welcome back to TalkNorth.com. Thank you for listening. If you can, please download before you listen. It helps our business. I'd also like to thank our producer, Brandon Morton, and let you know if you'd like to sponsor this program or any of the programs on the network. You can reach me at jsouhan47 at gmail.com. You bought your mom a dog. Yes, uh, my brother and I bought my mom a dog. That That's is not true. what you said off here. Yeah. And, uh, and my little six-year-old nephew named, named uh, her Peppy because she's Peppy, which I think is funny. And you can just tell my mom hates the name. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Does your mom like the dog? Yeah. And she, it's just like, all of a sudden, she said like six other names of the dog that she should name. I'm like, I really think you need to go with with your nephew, with your grandson. And she, like, reluctantly uh, said yes. So, And she was all excited. Uh, she, she took the dog for a walk, and it's like, the, the dog walks great. But then she promptly came into the, into the house and just pissed and you know what, everywhere. So <laughs> going to have to be a little, probably get the dog house broken. But, yep. Shouldn't that have been your job? Shouldn't you have no, I live the dog thousands first? of miles away. There's so, no doubt about that. So what are you getting your mom back for here? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I'm just. Uh, you what know, kind of a punishment? It was a, it was a, it was a half half Mother's Day gift by uh, my brother and I. And it sounds and like the back half in a, was yours. Hopefully, in a month when she, when it's her birthday, she remembers the Mother's Day gift. So, yeah, happy. Remind me never to get too close to you, where you would buy me a a, a present that poops. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Anyway, how are you, Jim? Uh, I'm good, Michael. I'm, how are you? I'm good. I was a little, uh, it's been a nerve wracking last couple hours. I bought a new iPhone, and the one thing that didn't upload correctly was my Twitter app. And uh, so it took me forever to, real, to remember what my like, password was. Oh, and, I mean, how much were your hands? And it basically, like, Twitter point. was like threatening me. It's like, we are about to lock you out. I'm like, no, do not. Like, can you imagine, like, I'm locked out of Twitter, and then all of a sudden, like, the news breaks that, like, GM is hired or something? which won't happen for a couple of weeks, but you know what I mean? So it was a little, it was a nerve-wracking experience. So was it like this, or was it more like this? No, it was, uh, it was pretty, it was nerve-wracking. Like, uh, it was like, fa- you know, like, what are the chances here, okay? So uh, I go to the Apple store in Rosedale, just with a friend, of my, a couple friends of mine, um, a father and son, because uh, the son... Uh, his, uh, his like I guess during the app the the app the software uh, update the other day it just completely went haywire on him broke his phone so we go there so of course I walk in and spend twelve hundred bucks so uh, but what is the chances the the salesman the Apple Store salesman is Brian Lawton's son so don't like, do yeah. anything to develop a source I know so I'm thinking I could write this thing off. Like, I'm like, so what's going on with your dad these days? So, uh, because he is a candidate for the, for the wild GM job. But what are, what are the chances? So it was, pretty, it was pretty just, you know, it just shows you small so world. You think this is you know, just... They got, a thousand, they got like dozens of Apple Store employees in there. And next thing you know, give me my phone. No, I'm looking for yeah. the spyware yeah, yeah. that he put on your phone so yeah. you can track what's happening with yeah. the, the hire. Speak of the devil. Yep. Um, so the uh, so the uh, so like what are the chances that that Brian Lawton's kid would uh, would uh, it's be from the... Brian Lawton who says now I know where you are at all times. <laughs> so yeah. So yeah. It was just uh, it was just kind of weird. So it was kind of just funny. Kind of try to dig in for a little info. So when's the meet? When are they meeting? You know that type of stuff. Any luck? Uh, I can't say. You're the competition. <laughs> I never really thought of myself as your competition, yeah. and I still don't after you said that, so <laughs> you, you can't convince me of that. So. I guess I should introduce the show. This is the Russo Suhan Show. He's Michael Russo from The Athletic, as you know. That's why you're here. We appreciate everybody coming out to Tin Shed. We've had huge crowds out here, and we had a huge crowd for the 2000th show. I almost said 2000s. So we'd be dead by then. Uh, we had a huge show for the Big Fenton News one. And there's absolutely no reason for any of you to be here tonight. You're still here, so thank you. Uh, and pouring rain, so thanks for coming. Pouring, yes. Uh, we know it's not always convenient, and yet people still come out, and we do appreciate it. This is Tin Shed Tavern in Savage. Uh, they have a lot of cool deals. They have 
Buy one, get one free pizzas on Mondays. Any size, any toppings, all day long. So if kids 12 and under eat free all day, every day, 50% off lunch deals, Monday through Friday, 11 to 1. Entire food menu is 50% off the purchase of any beverage. If a new two-for-one happy hour, Monday through Friday, 2 to 6, and then every day, 9 to close. Two to one on, or two for one on most draft pints. Uh, as you can see, million TVs, million games on the walls, really cool laid-back atmosphere, good food. I know Vicky and Clyde are enjoying the food tonight. So thank you to Tin Shed. It's in Savage. It's GPS it. It's tucked away, but it's not hard to find once you get here. Thanks to all their sponsors, Twill and the Dining Galleria, FixologyRepair.com, Tony Hoagland, your State Farm agent in Champlin, uh, BiteSquad.com. Use a promo code TALKNORTH for your first delivery fee waived. And... Uh, and again, tinshedmn.com is where you can look up the menu and everything else about here. So, have you heard about Brandon's woes? No, I, I kind of gathered something was going on here. I, I do know Brandon well enough to know that there's usually some woes. So, yeah, 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 yeah he's, not, he's not denying that. So, Brandon, our longtime producer, Brandon Morton, does a great job for us. Uh, he had a car stolen about a month ago, and I thought that was weird. And then he got a new car, and it just got stolen like a month to the day later. Two cars stolen in one month. God. Where do you live? Poor bastard. <laughs> yeah, I drove up. I picked Brandon up today. It's a beautiful neighborhood. There's, I, don't, I don't get it. God. I, I just, and, and Brandon, like poor Brandon, like you've been, you've been like mugged at gunpoint. You've been, the, didn't you, you have know? like a road rain incident, incident where you were like punched like three months ago? Uh, I mean, this is like, by the way, he wasn't the one that was raging. It was the other, it was the other guy. Um, it's just, man. So, hey, I, I mean, uh, it's kind of funny, but it's also really sad. It's so definitely we, not we funny. We feel bad for you. Well, we were talking about it the way here. It's kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, just this biz- bizarre funny. Not funny funny. Not ha funny, but bizarre funny. But we do, yeah, Ben Stiller's life funny. We do feel for you, Brandon. I'm sorry all this stuff is happening. but uh, Hopefully you get insured by Tony Hoagland. <laughs> I think Tony's already written him off. <laughs> it's, like, it's like part of the deal is like, hey, well, we'll do everybody but your producer. Exactly. <laughs> All right. What's going on with Don Waddle? Waddell. Waddell. Um, Waddle. Now, I don't have to learn his name if he's not coming here. Yeah. Somebody had a great line on Twitter the other day. It says, man, what a baller move. He, first, he fleeces him of Nino, and then he uses him to get a huge contract in Carolina. Uh, it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty funny. Uh, I... I might have liked that tweet. <laughs> I certainly, I might not have liked it because I didn't want people to see it publicly, but I certainly direct messaged it to about 50 of my friends. Uh, but it was, a, it was just a funny move. But yeah, you know, um, I, I heard on Friday that, the, that he was getting a ton of, that, that, that Tom Dunham was absolutely on fire and, and uh, sources of mine were saying that he was getting a ton of pressure and that this thing would come to a head on Friday. And then all week, and I was in contact with um, Don Waddell, and he didn't tell me what was going on. But from reading the tea leaves as a reporter, I knew that he was either quitting, fired, or he was going to have to pull out, and most likely the third one. And he definitely pulled out. Um, he called Craig Leopold yesterday and uh, backed out of the process. And, and uh, you know, it was interesting because when Don Waddell was suddenly available, first of all, if you remember I, on the last podcast, I pointed out that, the, that, this, that it was very likely he was going to interview for the job and that I mentioned on Twitter and Canes fans were like viciously attacking me. And I mean, there was no doubt that, that he was not content with this, the way that his owner proceeded all off season without giving him a uh, contract. And then all of a sudden he gets in front of uh, Craig Leopold and Matt Maka. And I think that it absolutely changed the process. Um, I think that Don all of a sudden, one, he hit the, hit the interview out of the park, but two, I think there was really a um, feeling that if Don can last to the end of this process, that hiring him would be kind of a, you know, maybe the smart move by this organization, because if all of a sudden you're hiring somebody two weeks before training camp, you know, somebody that might not be overwhelmed by that is Don Waddell. Um, I think we just saw with Paul Fenton that a lot of times when you get the big chair, there's stresses that come with that job that sometimes aren't uh, ones you expected when you didn't have the job or when you were hiring that person. I think there was an intrigue to hiring Don that he wouldn't be absolutely overwhelmed on one moving his life here, but 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 learning a new organization quickly, figuring out the lay of the land on how to, how to operate uh, right off the hop here where there's going to be growing pains with whoever you put in here, um, even if it's somebody like Ron Hextall because it's not like he's been a GM forever where Don's had uh, many, many years here. So now the process has absolutely changed. Um, I do think that there's probably five top, top contenders right now. Um, one is Ron Hextall. 
Um, I think that he is somebody that uh, really uh, had a great first interview. Is somebody that the Wild have been doing a ton of due diligence on. There's a, there's a real belief when you look at his uh, track record in Philadelphia that he left them in really good standing. Um, I think that he looks at this team as an aging team that's one probably going to have to be torn down a bit and then rebuilt back up, and I think that he's laid out a plan for that. Uh, the next two, to me, I put on the same plane, and they're the two that are the most uh, intriguing, and I could see very... Th- if, if Ron Hextall is going to lose out on this job, it's going to be to one of these two, I think, at this point, and that's Billy Guerin or Tom Fitzgerald. Um, Billy has been in here. Uh, there's plans to bring him in here again. They talked to him last year. Um, he also had a great first interview. Tom Fitzgerald is really interesting. He's sort of... It's bizarre, but he was the runner-up last year. He's got into this very late in the game here, but not because of disrespect for him or that they're looking to go in a different direction. I think that they, he blew them out of the water to such a degree last year that they felt like, well, we're not going to bring him in for a first interview and waste his time. And even as they enter the second phase here, I don't even think that they'll bring him in right now for a second time. I think it's more going to be having a real good, frank phone conversation this week. Um, and Tom trying to ascertain, hey, look, you know, if I put my name, if I'm back in this process, like, you know, like I don't want to lose out on the same job twice here. So where am I on your pecking order and trying to get that? And the other thing with Tom is that is that, you know, he is somebody that's extremely respected by Ray Shiro and this late in the game. I'm sure Ray doesn't want to lose him. Um, and uh, so he's somebody that I think will have a, uh, a you know, he's going to impress again. I, I know Tom, uh, I know Billy really well and I know Tom really well. Both of them have the type of per, type of uh, personalities where if you sit in front of them for a while, you're just going to automatically like them. They're engaging. And again, I, t- I covered Tom in Florida, and, and he is somebody that right off the hop, when I was a young kid covering this league, I was very, very close with. And coincidentally, uh, you know, uh, while the, uh, lived in the same community that my parents lived in uh, in, in South Florida uh, after the fact. Um, and then the next two there that I'm trying to ascertain really where they are on this is Scott Mellonby and Mark Hunter. Um, you know, Mark is somebody that I think that they've either talked to or they've definitely talked to him on the phone. The question is, are they bringing him in? Have they brought him in? Haven't figured that out yet. Um, he has gone down deep into the process in t- teams like Edmonton and Seattle. Um, and he is somebody that if you talk to people around uh, hockey about him is very, very uh, respected. And then Scott Mellonby, who is the captain of the Panthers when I, when I covered him, I had a great relationship with him down there. He is just coincidentally in about a week moving, moving to Hudson. Um, just a total coincidence. Uh, was, oh, this has been building a house, has always been doing this. This has been in the works for a couple of years that he was moving here. Went to University of Wisconsin. His wife's from Eau Claire. Tons of family in the area. It's middle of the country where he scouts uh, a lot. Um, so it works out absolutely perfect. So that would be a, you know, probably an easy decision to go there. And then there are the other candidates. You know, Brian Lawton's one that I think if he gets in front of them and gives a presentation, he's going to impress them. Uh, Mike Fuda in LA is another person that I know is a lot of people have said really good things about. Um, Mike Gillis, if you want NHL experience, he is a former agent. It was Pavel Burry's agent in, in the, uh, when the Panthers uh, traded for him and they signed him. I remember it was a, Six-year, $58 million contract the Panthers signed uh, with Gillis to get uh, Pavel Burry done. He was the Canucks GM. Um, those, to me, are the kind of the candidates right now. But I really look at this as, at least right now, as being kind of a three-horse race between Hextall, Garen, and Fitzy with Mark Hunter and Scott Mellonby right there. Hunter, Garen, and Fitzgerald are your leading candidates right now, you think? Yes, right now. Uh, that's just gut instinct. Um, and then just knowing how far, again... Uh, Garen and Fitzgerald got in the process last year. You know, it would take a lot of balls by the Wild to bring these two down this path again and not give them the job a second time. Uh, um, you know, that, that's the other thing here is, you know, I think sometimes it's probably uncomfortable for people like uh, Garen and Fitzy to constantly go for a lot of jobs uh, because all of a sudden you do get this uh, stigma about you that you kind of, for lack of a better term, can't finish or can't close. So sometimes, you know, it's not the greatest publicity if all of a sudden you don't get the job a second time. Right. So I think that's why there's probably hesitancy on both their parts to even dig into this unless they're going to, at the very end here, um, become the job. I think that both of them are great candidates with Hextall. I, I, I think that the people that are looking at Fitzgerald and Garen in particular as people like, well, Paul Fenton failed, so we can't go with a newbie this time. It's like when you it's like when, when, the, when the Wild lost in 07 to Anaheim and they went out and reacted by getting Fedoric and Chris Simon. You know, come on. Um, and that happens all the time. You know, you have, you have a, a, a coach that might be a disciplinarian. Now you go get your next coach is going to be the player's coach or some things like that. So I think a lot of people are expecting him to go with the NHL GM experience. But like in the case of Tom Fitzgerald, and this guy's been an AGM for, 20, for 10 years now, um, you know, has won cups. 
um, has been in, in a position where he's been right there in the trenches with Ray Shiro and, and both in Pittsburgh and New Jersey. 